Protecting men on testosterone and steroids. Harm reduction techniques. Is this ethical versus encouraging? A little controversy right off the bat. Because over the last 10 years or so, this is what I've been doing. And I think it's interesting to say that so many more physicians are sending and trusting their patients under my care. So thank you so much, physicians and colleagues, for that. Let's talk about what this actually is. Protection of men. They're on androgens. There's going to be side effects. You have to provide ethical protection. We have limited data, so I've worked on this, and I will continue to work on this. <clears throat> Let's talk about what that actually is. Well, a doctor comes in, or a doctor is called, primary care doctor recently, he wanted to hear what I was going to do for his patient and, and actually what happens to guys on testosterone and or steroids. So let's take it from the top. For the physicians and for all you men that are interested, what I do. Hair loss. What can we do? How do we assess every man? There's a whole bunch of medications, DHT blockers, right? This is finasteride and dutasteride. That in itself can cause severe disability for men. Finasteride syndrome, you could see that video. Next, topical medications. There are medications that can be used that are actually combinations of DHT blockers and other types of medicines like minoxidil that you see hair transplant and restoration guys use. Please see those doctors. They're very, very good. And dermatology doctors are excellent at the hair. So topical medications. PRP. This is information for you guys. I'm humbled to say that it actually probably works. If you could sit for all the procedures, they do plasma-rich platelet infusions from your own plasma in your platelets and they put it into your scalp and it stabilizes and can regrow hair. PRP for the hair. And then in the end, cosmetic surgery, hair transplantation. Next, I'm up on the brain. Antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications. Boy, how much can we talk about this? Men are on steroids, it worsens depression and or causes anxiety. Do they have organic anxiety and depression? Is it worse on steroids? Even TRT, you're gonna get a, an exacerbation of the mood. It's not just, it's an asshole, it's an asshole on steroids. That's not what it's gonna be. Next, sexual dysfunction medications. You're taking steroids. You're maybe very sexual, hypersexual, then there is a crash or there is a lean down towards poor sex. What can you do? I have to organically find other contributing medical issues as we're working with these men. Detailed histories and physical exams. Doctors call me and they send their patients with excellent notes. Thank you so much, doctors. PD-5 inhibitors. This is going to be Viagra, Levitra, Stendra the old school Tadalafil, Cialis, using other medications, classic medications, selective estrogen receptor modulators, Colmid, even Tamoxifen, the aromatase inhibitors, tricky drugs, you gotta be careful. Doc, let's look at the estrogen level. Let's just block it within an AI, everything's great. Boom, you guys know it's not true. I'm not saying you can't use these drugs, but for most men, when it comes to sex, looking at testosterone, looking at paper numbers, estrogen, ultra-sensitive estradiol, not total estrogen, and then modulating that organically with the micro-dosing or some type of dose adjustment versus using an AI is going to be the way to go. Can you use it for some men and just block that number on paper and the guy feels great sexually and it lasts? I want to hear from you. Let's see comments. I don't think so. Carbergeline, Kaber, apomorphine. I see these drugs. I'm using some of these drugs. I don't use apomorphine because it's not legitimate in America, but I see it over in Europe. These are sex drugs. Very, very incredible. Testosterone esters, weaning. Guys are blasting and cruising. I explained to the doctor, your patient was blasting and cruising because he's been on steroids for so many years, he can't get off. So he cruises to the blast because he loves it, and then he cruises. Boom, very important. 
T or T for life. So many guys have to understand this. That's probably the most important thing that I do is when I'm working with real patients that have used steroids, some of them so young now, it's unbelievable in their 20s, even some guys coming into their teens, I'm explaining to them, to their family, and even to their physicians that your hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis is going to be shut down to some degree. And you can look at the numbers on paper for your testosterone and your estrogen and, and your central nervous system with gonadotropins, LH and FSH. You could put the whole thing together, but it's a spectrum of disease. Using testosterone, using different types of steroids. Who are you? How long? How much? And what happens? This is the ethical aspect of providing protection. But this is really the diagnostic side. Next, we're still up in the head. We're moving into the skin, acne. I work with acne almost every day with so many men. If you have bad genes for acne because you had it when you're a young man and you go on steroids or testosterone, <laughs> you're gonna have acne. I work with topical medications. I work with sometimes systemic antibiotics. I work with great dermatologists. I don't give Accutane, but some dermatologists provide Accutane. This is a warning of using Accutane when co-administered with oral anabolic steroids, yes, on the liver, very dangerous. You have to watch this very carefully. A lot of the doctors, dermatologists, they don't know you're doing steroids or even testosterone, and testosterone is not gonna be liver toxic. But when you're using real oral anabolic steroids and then you combine it with Accutane, that is a severe warning for the risk of liver disease. Next, gynecomastia. Estrogen related information again. Microdosing, that's your key, microdosing, but it may not work. Some guys have gynecomastia. Two types of gynecomastia sensational, where you feel the sensation, and also then there's masses. I've never seen one case of breast cancer. I never want to see breast cancer. There's some relationship of protection of androgen versus the super physiologic estradiol, and we don't see breast cancer. I don't want to see breast cancer. Is that amazing? I've seen over 10,000 patients and I've never seen one case of breast cancer. Oh, I'm trying to find some wood we got to knock on here. Next, I use carefully, judiciously, AI, aromatase inhibitors, sometimes tamoxifen, but for a short period. And then we have, of course, we need surgery. You go for surgery. Next, it's interesting to see that there's no criticism on plastic surgeons for doing any of the kind of work they do. And certainly the gynecomastia experts in the world, they just keep cranking it out. They don't ask, it's like they don't look, they don't ask about the steroids, but they're not medical physicians, and I am a medical physician. So that's why we're working together, we're moving forward. And there should not be any criticism on these doctors that are trying to help these men. But it is interesting that they're just below the belt, working on the physical stuff, and they crank them out, and they just move on. Heart disease, this is really my bread and butter. Detailed assessment, you need medical history, family history. If you have a history of heart disease in the family, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention with or without testosterone. Vital signs, the blood pressure and that heart rate, it's very important. Labs, lipids, everyone knows about this stuff, right? Watch my videos. Glucose, hemoglobin A1C, coronary artery calcium scores, echocardiography, and all the medications that we talk about. Hypertension medications, lipid medications, pre-diabetes, diabetes. Now on the app, I will be talking about my own personal protocol and definitely all details, examples of details. It's gonna be medical education and examples of exactly all the doses and medicines that I use regularly to treat men. That's gonna be great. Kidney disease assessment on steroids with bad genes, taking a lot of extra stuff like protein, it's controversial, guys, but it can hurt. If you're hypertensive, you're on NSAIDs, you have FSGS. It's going to be bad. Now, this is not for guys on TRT. There's a line in the sand between TRT and steroids. A lot of physicians really don't understand this. Obviously, it's dose-dependent. Family history of kidney disease, serum, urinalysis. We have to look for labs. Early FSGS. I'm looking at this and finding it all the time. Aggressive blood pressure management. That's man per man. I'm doing it more per more. I'm looking at things, telling guys what to do. They work with primary care doctors because I can't work alone. I'm using cystatin C more and more. You could see all my videos on heart disease prevention, kidney disease. 
I'm working with nephrology doctors and primary care doctors all over this country and all over the world. Things are opening up. That's why protection of men on testosterone and steroids is so relevant. Let's keep moving next because this is an example where people say, what do you do? What? How, why are you a specialist? Let's keep going. Red blood cells, strap in, put the thinking caps on, androgen-induced erythrocytosis. This is when men take androgens and the red cells go up. It's not just that simple, guys. Monitoring. I have my own protocols when I work with men. I look at the CBC. I look at iron studies. Sometimes I get gene studies. If you have a history of hereditary human chromatosis or polycythemia vera, which that's very rare, but hereditary human chromatosis carrying state is not rare for Caucasian men from Europe. Family history, of course, obstructive sleep apnea, CPAP machines, living at high elevation. I have a guy that's in Colorado, a bunch of guys in high elevations all over the world, actually. And they say, Doc, one thing we can't change is I can't move. I can't move from Colorado down to LA. Okay, so we got to work around that. Medications, other medications interrelate to this, not to mention diets. It's a new era of research. One of the aspects of it I'm going to work at in my research and my academic intuition side is that I want to look at how can we prophylactically prevent the side effects of this polycythemia with the erythrocytosis from androgens, not just aspirin, guys, but everyone knows, take an aspirin, right? Well, there's no real data for this to prevent DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, myocardial infarction, and stroke. These are the issues. And there's some rare occlusions and some ocular issues, not to mention some men have headaches and they feel horrible when their, their hematocrit goes up to a certain level. Of course, hemoglobin. This is so complicated. This is really hematology. So I see a future. There are some interesting medications that we could lower the dose of testosterone, give the lowest dose that we can, and we could give prophylactic medications that can allow a man to stay on testosterone, the lowest effective dose, and to use these medicines. And these medicines I'll be discussing in the future. Next and last, into the pelvis, pelvic disease. I'll be discussing this, other videos in more detail. Prevention in the pelvis. This is going to relate to how androgens can affect your testicles and atrophy them and affect your prostate. It's atrophying versus fertility using HCG. Doctors, unless they're fertility doctors, don't know what these meds really are. Human chorionic natropin, Clomid, Brevel, Ovidril, urologic fertility procedures. That's it, guys. That's all, everything for fertility. On steroids, off steroids, on testosterone, with HCG, with Clomid. I do it all day long, co-administered with TRT. This is such an incredible aspect. So many young men on, are on testosterone. Do we administer HCG? Do we take a break and do Clomid? Do we do TRT by itself? And then when they're ready for fertility, boom, we blast up with HCG, which is my protocol basically, because that's a protocol that works and you don't have the down regulation. There's no data on this. We have to work on this. Prostate health and pelvic pain syndromes. Urology doctors are listening. They know what pelvic pain syndromes are. And there are some rare men that know what real pelvic pain syndromes are. I'm seeing more and more of this. This is a complex, multifactorial situation where men have just generalized pain. Again, these are not all men that are on testosterone, but when you're on testosterone and or steroids and the effects on your testicles and your prostate and just the lower pelvic region, this could exacerbate this. How do I see it in this multifactorial process? BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, which every man that gets older is going to have to some degree, urinary disease, urinary tract issues, and related to prostatitis, kidney disease, stones, kidney stones to infection. I even have learned and seen men, several men, very rare with interstitial cystitis, testicular changes, pelvic floor changes, on steroids and even TRT. I'm working with urology doctors more and more on this. This whole pelvis 
is not just urologic, it's a medical specialty too. It's amazing when you're on testosterone, it's going to affect the deep pelvis. As you get older, you're gonna have some symptoms of BPH. Hopefully, God forbid, not cancer. And there's no data to support using androgens cause cancer of the prostate. Certainly not testicular cancer. But look at Jay Burton. He's this famous snowboard guy. He died in his 60s from testicular cancer. So any man can get these diseases. It's all about how rare it is and how you're screening. You gotta be careful. I've even seen rare cases of, in this pelvic region, varicoceles that have, of course, everyone knows lower semen counts, but I've seen them affect a man's sexual function and potentially even testosterone. But I wanna be very conservative on that because they don't cause low testosterone. But every doctor knows that varicoceles can lower semen counts and sperm counts. Now imagine you're on and off testosterone and steroids. There's gonna be an interplay. Next, intratesticular and extra testicular pelvic cysts. Just wanna be very careful. These are benign cysts, they lead to symptoms. I've seen cases where I've seen men with having history of these, say, spermatoceles, and they're very benign. The doctors have decided they're not big enough or obstructive enough or causing pain symptoms to remove them surgically, so they haven't. But I've seen some cases, and you guys have seen my videos, where it's affected testosterone and maybe sex hormone binding globulin. Who knows? This is an interplay, so complicated. So, whew, there it is, guys. From head to toe of protecting men on testosterone and steroids for physicians and anyone who's interested, it's very complicated. The world is moving forward. It's becoming its own specialty. Of course, we call it testosteronology. And I wanna thank everyone for paying attention to this, watching the full video. Please subscribe to these things. And I really hope in the end, this helps men in the world suffer less and enjoy better qualities of life. Thank you so much.